So I thought I'll keep it pretty short and uh, pretty uh, simple uh, as we come to the end of a very complicated year. Why complicate things more? By the way, a warm welcome or a cool welcome because it's air condition to Ovian, our newest member. He is uh, just a few months old, couple of months old, and he's seated right at the back. A good place to start. Eventually, we believe he will move forward like uh, Danushka has moved forward. First day when Danushka came, he was right at the back. Now he's right in the front seat. So, welcome to all of you. And as we lead into another year, we measure our time by, uh, you know, every time the earth goes around the sun, it is one year, we all know that. And we tend to think that uh, when 31st December ends, all the struggles of the previous year are left behind and all a glorious new morn is going to dawn tomorrow. Not really. As you walk out, you still need your uh, distancing and your mask and you will still have the same problems. But uh, let us hope. So my challenge for us, I want to leave with us uh, three priorities for the next year. Because all of us have different challenges. Some of us may be moving overseas to uh, visit our, live with our wives. Some of us may be living here with our wives or whatever the challenges are. And some of us may be uh, getting a wife. Um, <laughs> so, so whatever the challenges are, these priorities should remain. So this is the verse, you know, in World Vision, every year we have a separate or a different theme. And this is the theme for us this time, that is uh, Matthew 6.33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. So that's partly most of the testimonies today. Even the testimony that Rodney gave is about three meals on the table even when there was a lockdown for three months, a complete curfew for three months. So that's what God is capable of. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given to us as well. I've often said this, horses, say take elephants and human beings, we can move forward, we can push things and we can also pull things. You see elephants pushing logs and you see them pulling a rope. We human beings can do the same thing. Apparently horses cannot do that. They can only pull things and they cannot push things. I never seen a horse pull things. Why? Because, or rather, uh, push things. Why? Because they are not made that way, except in cartoons, of course. So we have to put the horse before the cart. If you put the cart in front and put the horse behind, nothing will move because the horse will not know what to do. Sometimes in our lives, what we do is, we put the cart in front and we put the horse behind. And that's why our lives are not moving. They are not productive. They are not being blessed. So in God's kingdom, we have to give number one place to God, his kingdom and God's righteousness. And other things will fit into place. I'd like to think that's how God acts because that is God's promise. So I want to leave with us three quick priorities, three W's. I love these, um, you know, wordplay and uh, these alphabets. I've spoken about three D's, I've spoken about three T's, and I'm speaking about three W's. Worship, work, and witness. And it, uh, it's a challenge for every one of us. Sorry. Okay. First one in Hebrews 10 and verse 22. This is to do with worship, the first W. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Listen to this, Hebrews 10, 22. And the same chapter, verse 25, three verses later. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. The day is uh, the coming of the Lord. So this is a key verse. This problem wasn't there only in the 21st century. This was there 
in the time of the apostles themselves. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Now it is not my intention to individually find fault with people. That's not why the pul pulpit has been given to me. It is given to me to encourage one another. So even in the time of the apostles, people did not go and meet together with other church members when they came together in worship. And the apostles started this practice of meeting together on the first day of the week. And that's why we also meet on the first day of the week, which is a Sunday. We come together and this is the command of God. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. So some people were not meeting together. Now, this is important. Sorry. Why have I put pencils there? See, the world calls us all the time. The world attracts us all the time. And the world wants us to worship the world and not worship God. Why the pencils? This is an old story that I read many, many years ago that came to mind. There was a church that used to, that was a large church, thousands of people. And they used to buy pencils regularly because whenever new people come, they'll give a, a sheet of paper to get down their details so that the church can be in touch with them. So since it's a large church, a lot of new people come and they've been buying these pencils for a long time. But suddenly, the pencil supplier realized that the church had stopped buying pencils from him. So one day, this guy calls the pastor of the church and asks, why have you stopped buying pencils from us? So the pastor's reply was, look, the last time we bought pencils from you, there was something printed on the pencils and we didn't like it. It said, play golf on Sundays. So you are giving wrong advice to my church members and that's why I'm not buying pencils from you anymore. I don't know whether it's true or not, but it brings out a point. Because there are so many attractions in the world that will take us away from whether it's a Sunday morning attendance or whether it's a Bible study attendance or whether it's a men's fellowship or women's fellowship attendance or any other thing. Because this world is full of attractions. Thankfully, due to COVID-19, today not very many attractions because most people are at home because hotels are closed and you, know, you can't have those 31st night parties and all the other dances and functions are cancelled. But otherwise, there is so much of attraction that it's easy for us to forsake the assembling of together, coming together of believers and to be somewhere else. So we need to be mindful of that because that will shape us, shape our Christianity, that will shape our lives. Now worship to the living God must be a priority in our lives. The number one duty or function of a believer is to worship God. But remember worship is not only when we come together as a church, it should be all the time. Worship is a lifestyle. Now, when I care for a sick person or for a poor person, when I help somebody who is helpless, that's a form of worship to God because worship is giving God his worth. So when we obey the Lord, that is worship. But coming together as a company of God's people is something that is mandated in the word of God. We are asked to come together, to worship together. At the same time, we can also worship him at home. But I've heard so many people tell me this. Look, you know, I don't go to church. There are all bad people there. So I'm worshiping it at home. The fact that the church has bad people is a known thing because church is for bad people. Because we are all sinners saved by the grace of God. But we are supposed to come together. So he is our creator, our sustainer, our savior, our redeemer. He deserves our attention and our attendance. Therefore, he deserves the best worship that we can give him. So coming together is mandated by God. Now, this was a man by the, written to a man by the name of Billy Sunday. If, I don't know whether you have heard of him. Billy Sunday was a great evangelist. 
he was um, his you know USP or unique selling proposition was that he had a fantastic sense of humor people went to hear him speak because they come out laughing because he would make them laugh at the same time he was a serious teacher of God's word and this is what Billy Sunday says that an elderly gentleman when he was a new believer when Billy was a new believer an elderly gentleman told him this he said Billy there are three simple rules I can give you and if you hold to them no one will ever write backslider after your name take 15 minutes a day to listen to God talking to you that's the Bible take 15 minutes each day to talk to God in a way that's prayer and take 15 minutes each day to talk to others about God that is witness of course whether we should limit it to 15 I'm not saying that but it brings out the point so divine worship or daily worship if daily worship is part of our lives then our Sunday worship will be a priority you know when people don't feel like going to church on a Sunday uh, and I have often said this in many churches across all the denominations the body language of the people who come to church it's as if they are being dragged there against their will you know that's something we need to be mindful about why a lot of people are going to church just to mark the register there is no excitement there is no joy in their lives they are not excited about going to church I remember my kids when they were smaller you know when they reach teenage years all the excitement goes away when they were smaller and they're ready to go for one of these movies generally animated movies they used to love the Walt Disney and you know all of that you know they'll get into the car and tell me go faster go faster we're going to miss the movie they are so excited about it you know the previous night itself they'll go to sleep talking about the movie and they'll wake up the next morning talking about the movie and the whole day they are excited about it now we as Christians we are not even half as excited as kids going for a movie that shows our spiritual state if we are truly walking closely with the Lord this time of worship would be amazing for us I love this next quote this comes from William Gladstone a former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and this is what he said tell me what the young men of England are doing on Sunday and I will tell you what the future of England will be this is so true tell me what the young men of England are doing on Sunday I will tell you what the future of England will be now this doesn't exempt the women but that was a male dominated society more than 100 years ago but the fact remains the same you tell me if you're a parent you tell me what your sons and daughters are doing on a Sunday morning and I will tell you what the future of your family is going to be if I may rephrase it you know this is very important as parents we need to bring up the children under the sound of the gospel we need to bring up the children under the sound of the Bible that's how we are going to make real men and real women out of them I know people who are not bothered about their children because they are not bothered about God and later on when the children grow up and they misbehave they turn to God and say why is this happening Lord the answer is here for me this is very important tell me what the young men and women of our families are doing on a Sunday and I will tell you what the future of our society is going to be and I will tell you what the future of your family is going to be and I will tell you what the future of those young men and young women is going to be now this is a very vital challenge even if you forget everything else I have said up to this point this is very important I love this quote because our character is shaped at the feet of the Lord our children's character and their future are shaped at the feet of the Lord so the responsibility lies with the parents now I look back on my childhood now coming back to my mom again my father was an atheist almost all his life he didn't believe in God He's, he trusted in Christ only about two years before he died 
1996 January and he died in uh, March of 1998. But my mother was a woman of faith and she insisted that we go to church with her every Sunday. And that's how I heard the Bible stories and that's how I learned lessons in the Sunday school. That was, or those were the seeds that were planted in me that eventually led me to the Lord many years later. So whose primary responsibility is it? It's a parent's responsibility. So those of you who are already parents, or who are going to be parents, listen to this very carefully. The best thing that you can do for your children, more than the best education you can give them, anything else you can give them, is to enable them to worship in the assembly. So ensure that you block that time off for God. If it's Sunday morning, you block some time off. If there is a prayer meeting, if it's a Bible study, block that time off. Block time off for them to pray, to study the Bible. And these things are absolutely important. The second one, worship is the first one, first priority for us. Second priority is work. Again, a little story, you may have heard this before. The boss said to John, John is just a person, uh, you know, hypothetical, fictitious person. How long have you been working here? So, the, you know what that question means. You know, the boss meets John for the first time. John, how long have you been working in this office? And John misunderstood it and he was very honest. John said, ever since I heard you coming down the hall. <laughs> so, basically, John wasn't doing anything until the boss came. Only when the boss was there, John was willing to work. There are lots of people like that. I remember a particular CEO of a bank, a public limited company in Sri Lanka. I will not mention the bank. And uh, somebody told me, uh, you know, in uh, Colombo Fort, the headquarters of the bank is here, across the road, this man's office. He says, Every evening, around 7 o'clock, he could see the CEO of the bank leaving in his car. Within two to three minutes, about another 15 cars of senior executives will go. Why? They are all staying in office because they want to show the boss that they are working. But the moment the boss takes off, they all leave. So that's not what the Bible encourages us to do. God wants us to work. So some people need motivation in order to work. Uh, for some it is uh, salary, for some it is the fear of punishment, if you don't work you get uh, penalized, you can be dismissed, you won't get your bonus. Some because they are mortally afraid of the boss, that's why they work. So sometimes it's you need the money to look after your children, to look after your family and so on. But remember, all of us need to work. But here I'm not talking about, uh, sorry. I'm not talking about secular work. I'm talking about work in the kingdom of God, work in the body of Christ. Now, God's people should be hard at work. Again and again, God keeps telling us that we need to work hard. Now, think of it this way. We are who we are today in the secular world or in normal life because of our parents because they worked hard they provided for us and as a result we are able to you know we were able to have nutritious food we were able to go to school we were able to you know buy books and learn and uh, get a qualification and perhaps start working and become successful ourselves so in the same manner in the kingdom of god we need to work we know so many people who are very hard workers when it comes to their secular jobs. But sadly, when it comes to the body of Christ, the church, there is hardly any commitment from them. From Monday to Friday, they'll work their heads off in a secular job. Why? The rewards are immediate and the rewards are tangible. What do I mean by that? If you work hard in a secular job, you get a good salary, immediate rewards, promotion. At the same time, uh, you know, it's something that you can touch and feel. You know that the rewards are there and you can see it. But in the kingdom of God, you work hard. The rewards are not 
tangible. It's not always money or wealth. The rewards are not uh, immediate. Many of the rewards that we will have will come to us only when we reach eternity. Take the Apostle Paul. You know, I don't think anyone worked as tirelessly as the Apostle Paul in the kingdom of God. He was a man full of energy and enthusiasm and nothing could keep him down. He worked so hard and what did he get at the end? He was imprisoned in a place called the Mamertine prison in Rome. Where you can't, and it was in a, a lower part of the cellar with a hole up there. And they lower you through the hole and you are in there. It's rest, rat infested. That's, that is where you defecate and that's where you eat. That's where you sleep. Smelly. And perhaps they'll give you a small lamp for light. That's all. You can't even stand straight. Somebody like me can't even stand straight because the prison is only this much. The cellar is this tall. That's all he got for a lifelong dedicated service to Christ. Why the rewards are not necessarily in this life. Of course, God does reward us. But bulk of the rewards for the work that we do in the kingdom is there. So because of that, because the rewards cannot be seen, they are not tangible, rewards are not immediate, a lot of people do not work hard in the kingdom of God. They'll work hard in the secular world because the rewards are immediate and the rewards can be seen. When it comes to church, they will be resting. Someone said, I'll quote, the world is full of willing people. Some are willing to work and the rest willing to let them work. So that's a case of the body of Christ. Look at this, Romans 16 and verse 12. Greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, funny names. Those women who work hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. You know, the only reward these people got in this life to have their name recorded in the Bible. My name is not in the Bible. It's there only in one Bible, my Bible, where I've written down my name. <laughs> but these people had their names in the Bible. And that was the only reward. And interestingly, all three are females here. Tryphena and Tryphosa. You know, sounds funny, those names. You, don't, you won't give these names to your daughters. And uh, Persis. But these are, we don't know who they are. Nothing else is written about them. But Paul commends them. The Holy Spirit commends them for the work that they do. The next verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. I often quote this. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. For you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. This is a very amazing verse. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Not half-heartedly, not as it is convenient to us, but give it fully so that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. A quick, uh, like a poem. I hope you get the essence of it. He couldn't speak before a crowd. He couldn't teach a class. But when he came to Sunday school, he brought the folks en masse. He couldn't sing to save his life. In public, couldn't pray. But always his jalopy was, jalopy is kind of an old jeep, and always his jalopy was just crammed on each Lord's day. And though he could not sing, nor speak, nor teach, nor lead in prayer, he listened well, he had a smile, and he was always there. With all the others whom he brought, who lived both near and far, and God's work prospered, for he had a consecrated car. No, he had a consecrated heart. And if the heart is right, the hands will work. Saw the essence of it? 
this is a person whom we will consider as not a gifted person. He couldn't teach, he couldn't sing, he couldn't do all of that, but he could still do something. What could he do? He could, he had a consecrated heart. He listened to the sermons and he obeyed the Lord. He had a smile on his face. So the only ministry he could do was that he had an old jalopy, a vehicle. He used that to pick up people and drop them after church. So you can see that if you really want to serve the Lord, there are so many opportunities that are available. So what kind of work can you do for the Lord in 2021? Just think of it. One of the advantages we have as a church is that we believe and we try to practice the priesthood of all believers. None of us, we are, we are a special caller. None of us have titles. Though some of you call me pastor, I prefer not uh, because the, I'm not a pastor in the sense it's not a title. I may perhaps do the uh, work of a pastor, but that's it. We all call each other by first name or if you are very old, we'll call you uncle and auntie. And, uh, you know, we, we, we want everyone to be involved in the ministry. Uh, next year is a year I planned in my heart and I've been praying uh, in the presence of the Lord that we want to expand our ministry in terms of getting people getting involved more and more. Uh, that doesn't mean that every, you know, anyone is going to be pressurized more, but we will all be serving the Lord more. So think of it because we are called to be servants. So before I go to the final one, which is uh, a witness, let me quickly read us two words and listen to a song quickly after that. Let me just read these two verses uh, quickly. Romans 12, 11. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Romans 12:11. Uh, I took the New uh, Living Translation because it brings out the meaning well. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. I'll read that again. I like that. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. I want us to, you know, you may know this hymn, but I want you to listen to this.
third W, which is witness. And uh, before I put up that slide, uh, a church wanted to advertise its services. And they wanted to put uh, Bible messages outside the church to attract people to the church. So they reached uh, out to an advertising executive. The executive told the pastor, you put a billboard inside your church property facing inwards. Okay, apologies about that. So this is what the advertising executive told the pastor. The, the reason for that he mentioned was because the best witnesses you have should be from within the church. They are the ones who should be encouraged to go out and witness. So Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. 1 Peter 3.15 Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and uh, respect. Okay. So more than ever before, we need to witness for Christ. As we know that uh, the times that we are living in are quite perilous times and uh, these are perilous times that we live in and this is the time in which we need to witness to people and uh, we need to give away our faith to the people so that they can uh, be excited about what, we, what excites us. We need to advertise, talk, invite, encourage people and we come across many people in our uh, daily walk in this world and a lot of them don't know the Lord. A lot of them are unaware of uh, our faith and the difference that God has made for us in our lives. So if we are sold on Christ, we need to, we also should be selling. So Acts 8 verse 4, those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. So I want to wish each one of you a very happy new year, 2021. And I believe that these three W's you will remember that we need to worship, we need to work, and we need to witness. And these simple things, if we do them right, we will see that, uh, that God will touch our land. He will touch our society. He will make this country a better country. But more than that, we are fulfilling our commitment to God. We are fulfilling our life's calling. So I would uh, now say a short prayer to end the sermon, a few announcements. And after that, we will have a final hymn uh, during which the collection, the offering will be taken. And after that, please uh, stay behind. We have uh, Kiribat. Please stay behind and have a time of fellowship. Greet one another. Uh, before you go away. So just uh, let us pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for what you have taught us this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the encouragement that you have given to us. Help us, Lord, to prioritize the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And we have promised that the other things, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we wear, where shall we live, all these things will be taken care of, of by you, O oh Father. Lord, I thank you for this church. Thank you, Lord, for the year that we have spent. Lord, with all, in the midst of all the challenges, we couldn't even come face to face for at least almost half the year. We thank you, Lord, that you have enabled us to continue to grow together in the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for the spiritual growth that we see in each and every one of the members of this assembly. It's your work, Father. It's your doing. We want to continue to grow. We want to be a good witness wherever you have planted us, Father, in this locality, near our homes and near our workplaces. Help us to be good witnesses of Jesus Christ. Lord, we commit each and every one of us, our families, into your hands, Father. We commit our challenges, our difficulties that we are going to face during the coming year, but we know that you walk along with us. 
you carry us father even when we go through these uh, valley experiences thank you lord once again for being a faithful god in jesus name amen